Hi, I'm Steve Rosales, and welcome to Belmont Journal. Today, we have a special show. You know, there's an $8.4 million override coming up on April 2nd. Today, we're going to have not a debate, but we're going to hear from each side. We're going to have 15 minutes from the yes side, Adam Dash, 15 minutes followed, followed by 15 minutes from no side, I believe Timothy Duncan. So we're going to get right to it. Half hour show, we'll learn what we can learn. Adam, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Steve. Okay, so you're here from the yes side. So let me start. Yeah, so does Belmont have a spending problem? Belmont doesn't have a spending problem. Belmont, like a lot of other communities, has a problem with inflation. Uh, and increases in things that are beyond the 2.5% that the current uh, law allows to be increased every year. And we, like other communities, hit up against the ceiling. And you know that in 2015, we had an override that was supposed to go for three years. We got it through nine years, and now it's 2024, and it's up. So it's time now to reinvest in the town. Okay. So there's a campaign going on there. You know, uh, this being Belmont, like any other community, there are sides. There's a yes side, there's a no side. So there's an organized yes side. You're here, you're here on their behalf? Yeah, the Invest, in, invest for Belmont, yes. Uh, Investinbelmont.com, is that where they can That's find right. that? Yes. Okay. So tell me about, uh, about your campaign. Well, I mean, we're trying to get the word out, make sure people understand the implications of the override. I don't know if people saw the uh, last budget summit that was held between the select board and the school committee and the capital budget committee and the uh, warrant committee but they went through a lot of presentations about what would get cut. I mean, there are two budgets that are going to town meeting that are pretty much established at this point. One if the override passes and one if it fails. And if, the, if it fails, then there are gonna be some draconian cuts that are gonna fundamentally change this town in a way that I think people don't wanna see. Um, there are gonna be problems that are gonna be hurting people, such as uh, 50 school employees, which would hurt the children, 85% of the students who would not be allowed to use the bus anymore, who currently do, which means more cars and traffic on our streets, arts and sports teams cuts, possible closure of the Burbank School. You're talking about 24% cut to the to this console on aging for the seniors, which is going to hurt them. Uh, needs for emergency services, cuts for eight firefighters, which could lead to longer response times. Library cuts that could lead to us leaving the Minuteman network because we don't meet the threshold for minimum spending, which we're right at right now. And certainly the cuts would put us below that. Um, and uh, trash, charging for trash, uh, where we currently don't. So, I mean, these are going to be fundamental cuts and changes to this town that I think are going to really change the way it is. If we want to pass the override because we want to keep things the way they are and then also set us on a path to move forward so we're on a better structure. And that's what everyone said, all those different committees at that last budget summit were talking about. We're doing all of this, getting this override passed, and committing to moving forward in a way that makes Belmont more sustainable. Uh, do you really believe all that? Absolutely. Uh, isn't it seem a little draconian? Isn't this, I mean, there's a perception out there on the street, if you go to the star market or out and about, that it's just scare tactics. That's the same playbook that was in recently, what, 2021, when the previous one failed? Well, in 2021, we lucked out in that the federal government bailed us out with ARPA funding, the American Rescue Plan Act, which, they, which came out from nowhere from the COVID, uh, from COVID pandemic. We just got lucky. So we were able to use that funding to move it along further. However, what we're talking about now is serious. There is no money in the seat cushions. We've got the, we had the Structural Change Impact Group looking around and finding things, the Economic Development Committee. Groups have been working and uh, that we've been right-sizing things. We've been combining things. The Community Development Department restructured. The Facilities Department restructured. Town Administration and the Finance Team has been restructured. We've done restructuring and cutting and pairing. And as you know, for decades, we have been underfunding maintenance and we've been underfunding um, a lot of things in this town, which has led to problems, such as we end up having to replace streets because we have not been properly maintaining them for decades to the point where when they go, you have to replace the whole street. We've had buildings that have to get replaced because they've had deferred maintenance for decades. And the idea now is to have these buildings. We have the new high school. We're going to have the new library. We're going to have the new rink. We've had the new uh, other buildings that went up, the DPW, the police station project that you were involved in. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you for doing that. Um, the Underwood Pool, and we want to get keep these maintained, and we want to keep them moving forward because it will be cheaper in the long run if we maintain everything properly. We don't want to be cutting, um, cutting budgets. We don't want to be cutting staff because our budgets are mostly people. 
the budget in this town, if you look at it, is mostly staff salary. If you're cutting the budget, you're cutting people, which cuts services. Increased class sizes, fewer firefighters demand shifts. That's what we're talking about. It's not a scare tactic, it's fact. The idea is to keep things as we are. And as you know, the, the maybe you don't know, the uh, way that the um, school enrollment has been is that during COVID, like many communities, does the enrollment dipped a little bit and now it's climbing back again, which was expected because COVID was a, an anomaly. So right now, we need to make sure we have enough teachers in the school to teach, to teach the, um, the kids. We need to have people to run the library once we build the new library. We need people to run the rink. We need people in these positions. The idea of the vote yes, voting yes is to keep what we have, just to be clear. Voting yes is to keep what we have and to allow us to restructure and move forward. And I know the select board is committed, and Elizabeth Dion has said this, to do a compact with the town, specifically what they're going to do if the override passes to get us on a more stable footing so we don't find ourselves in these situations as much again, which is what they should be doing. But to keep in mind, we're not adding massive things if this override passes. We're just keeping what we have and trying to make sure that we don't fall into a problem again. If this override fails, we're cutting what we have. So have the selectmen, to your knowledge, uh, made that, how did you just put it, as the to compact. what, the, the compact? Yeah, they discussed that at the budget summit, um, which is available online. People can certainly watch that budget summit that was held a week or two ago, last week, something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, they all talked about that. Elizabeth Dion has been very explicit, and Mark Palillo as well, and Roy Epstein, that this is what they're going to do, that if this override passes, they will have this compact. Well, they will con basically contract in a, you know, more of a, not legal, but in a moral contract with the town that this is what they're going to do. If you entrust us to move forward with this override and ES vote, then we will do these things to put the town on a better financial footing. You mentioned trash. Uh, years ago, didn't we have a special trash override for trash? We did. Okay, so why is that being revisited? Because we are, as I said, in a dire situation right now. What's on the table right now is that there would be then a cost of $362 per year to uh, charge for trash pickup plus a fee for bulky items, which as if you look at it, that's 49% of the $740 average cost for a million dollar house in Belmont, which is about the average for this override, so about 49% of that override increase per year per average household would be $362 of that would just be the trash, which, does, which is fine if you've got a lot of money. It's not fine if you don't. Okay, and how are you getting the message out to your voters? Well, I think there have been standouts. There was one last weekend in Belmont Center. Uh, there are going to be other events. There's a website seeking donations, clearly, and uh, we're, I'm doing things like this to get the word out. Um, I, you've probably seen uh, there's an article in the Belmont Voice, and I know they're going to be uh, further reporting on this, as would be the Belmontonian. I mean, it's certainly a large issue, and this is a very, very, very important issue. Everybody should get out and vote. Everybody. The higher the turnout, the more legitimacy of the outcome, and the more I think that people will understand uh, the need. Okay, so they, the voters didn't approve the override in 2021, so uh, what makes you think they're ready to approve it this time around? Well, I think in 2021, A, right during COVID, probably not the greatest timing. <coughs> B, was that the, uh, during that override, the federal government was talking about the ARPA funding. And I know the no campaign on that time was talking about, well, the ARPA money is going to come and bail us out so you don't need the override. We did not know that at the time of the vote. It turned out that that's what happened. So we all lucked out on that one. It was not a risk I was willing to take. But it all worked out, and we were able to you know, keep things rolling for a few more years. But we are, as I said, at the end of the line of that. Okay, so <clears throat> so what will a yes, so I guess I think you've hit it. I mean, the two obvious questions, what will a yes vote mean for Belmont? What will a no vote mean for Belmont residents? Right, I mean, the yes vote is keeping the town as we like it and putting us on the footing to be more financially stable going forward. A no vote is draconian cuts, they're gonna hurt a lot of people. That's the blunt, version of this. Okay. And if the vote is yes, how long is it expected to last before you ask for another one? Yeah. I mean, typically, uh, as long as we can get it. Like I said, mm -hmm. we thought three years in 2015, and we ended up nine years later, here we are, and haven't had an override since. So good fiscal management is a good part of that. Um, the ARPA funding was part of that. But good fiscal management doubled the length of it at the beginning, um, even before the 2021 override. Um, uh, it also depends upon the uh, restructure, but I would say uh, you know, as many years as we can get. 
I mean, obviously, this has been looked at for a long time, even when I was on the board. I left in April of 2024, right, 2023, 2023. Time flies. Yeah, it's very boy, it does. Yeah, that's <laughs> telling about it. But, you know, the fact that, um, you know, a lot of, we've been looking into this, the Warren Committee and other financial groups in town and the select board and the, t and the administration have been looking into this for a long time and trying to budget this. Because we knew this time would come because the override was never from 2015, which was the last one we passed, was never meant to be permanent forever and ever. Because, as you know, inflation increases costs. And uh, at that point, sometimes you just have to increase pay as well. You can't hire your own employees without giving them raises. I mean, no. it's just the way it goes. I agree with so, you. So, I mean, and that money has to come from somewhere. And since Proposition 2.5 caps you at a 2.5% increase and inflation is greater than 2.5%, at some point, those lines are going to diverge and cross each other, and you have to go and uh, increase taxes more than 2.5%, which is the point of Proposition 2.5. It's not a, an override is not a bug. An override is a feature of the system. It's not that you can't raise taxes, that that, it's that you just have to put it on the ballot before you do above 2.5%, and that's what okay. we're doing. All right, so we've reached uh, 14 minutes or so about, so I'm going to turn the mic over to you. Closing comment, one minute. Thank you, Steve. Mike is yours. I've come out of retirement of my Belmont Select Board uh, work uh, in order to work on this to make sure that this override passes, because if the override does not pass, this town will be fundamentally changed for the worse. I will be blunt, the stakes are incredibly high. In order to keep this town as it is and to set it on a better path going forward, we need to pull together and vote yes on April 2nd to pass the override. A no vote will, on the override will hurt everyone in this town, including our most vulnerable. Our children will get hurt, our seniors will get hurt, our residents in need of emergency services will get hurt. All, we will all get hurt by library cuts, We'll all get hurt by having to pay for trash pickup. All of these cuts and much more will cause us to lose what we love about this town. No is not a plan. No is not a solution. None of us want to pay more, but we're adults and we understand that things which make Belmont great cost money and that they increase in cost year by year. That is simply reality. I implore you to vote yes on the override so we can keep what we have and set us up for future success. Thank you. Thank you, Adam. Stay tuned for the no point of view. Remember, town election, April 2nd.